Pebble was really interesting because I was sort of the first um, data person in the door there. So when I joined, um, we basically, I had no team. We had basically an empty database and not even any KPIs for how to measure um, how the watch was being used, if it was, you know, if the product was um, successful in the ways we want it to uh, be, um, much less doing anything like building products powered by data. So um, I think there are sort of two interesting things that we did at Pebble that were, um, you know, relevant to it being a hardware company and not a software one. Um, the first challenge you have is that you, these products are out in the world. <laughs> um, they might be on someone's wrist. They might be lying in a drawer just waiting for the ba battery to go dead. Mm. So one of the first things we did was um, try to figure out how we could tell um, whether the product was being used and for how long. And to do that, um, we had to get creative. Um, the, 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 one of the challenges of working with hardware data is the data is not coming in a constant stream. So we had data coming off the watch that would be given back to us every um, hour or so in a roll-up of all the things that happened. And part of that included accelerometer data of how much the watch had moved around. So by leveraging that piece of information, we were able to tell if the watch was in motion. And it turned out that it's very the accelerometer is very sensitive um, and you can tell how many hours a day an individual is wearing the watch. Now, I know that when you get into the details of how <laughs> data scientists work with data, what we actually look at, it always does sound a little creepy. Um, but the reason why that was really important to us is it gave us all this interesting information that we could use to figure out what to do with the product going forward. One of the things we discovered was that about 10% of our population was wearing the watch 24 hours a day. I actually thought this was an error. I was like, that's weird. <laughs> that seems like noise to me. Um, I surveyed the office. Again, this was just me at the time by myself working. I just went around the office and I asked everybody, like, do you sleep with your watch on? And about 10% of the office did. Um, so that sort of validated that it wasn't just noise. The data was telling us something real. And that was a precursor. Again, this was, you know, before the days of the Apple Watch, Fitbit was out there, but they were very, doing things that were very different than what we were doing at Pebble, although they did end up acquiring the company a few years later. Um, but so that, that insight laid the groundwork for the idea that we would add um, sleep tracking in the future um, because we already had a customer base that was sleeping with their watch. Um, so that was sort of the first um, interesting challenge and I think success of working with data on a hardware product. Um, I think the second category is a bit more broad. Um, obviously over time we realized that health was a very important uh, feature, smartwatch feature that our users were kind of expecting that they'd be able to track their steps, track their sleep, and even eventually like track their heart rate. Um, so we worked a lot on problems in that domain and uh, worked around building data powered features that, um, you know, leverage step sleep and heart rate data. Um, but I think the unique thing that Pebble was able to do was because we had a robust app store, um, we could build our own data powered apps, kind of little st skunk works projects um, as experiments for what we could do, like how we could leverage the fact that you're wearing this product on your body all the time. So one product that um, my team built was a little app that it basically sent you questions throughout the day about your mood <laughs> and what you've done in the past hour or so. Like, are you have you you know, have you eaten? Are you drinking water? Did you, have you exercised? Just little things like that. You could um, customize it with voice input. Basically, we were trying to take advantage of the fact that you're wearing this watch right on your wrist. You're not having to take a phone out of your pocket. So you can give feedback in a kind of uh, seamless way. So the fact that we had this unusual interaction model based on, you know, having a wearable product, um, allowed us to collect this kind of intimate data set and then give each individual user feedback about like, hey, here's here's how these activities impacted um, your mood over the day or over the week.